internet friends, my name is Lexi and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be recommending to you my favorite cozy fall book recommendations. Today I am drinking the most delicious thing in my entire life. It is youth berry tea from Tivana and it has notes of apple and orange, hibiscus, rose petals, dried mango, and I have in here a couple of cinnamon sticks and some orange peels. Oh, and it's so good. Oh, and there's honey in there too, so that it's like sweetened just a little bit. So when initially compiling this list, I had a lot of books and I didn't want to recommend too, too many books in this particular video just because I, I wanted to keep it kind of like simple in a way. So I kind of limited myself to three book recommendations per category. So today we will be doing graphic novels, audiobooks, middle grade YA, and adults. Within each category, I kept it to three books, except for audiobooks, I only have two recommendations for audiobooks. Okay, so with that, let's get started. So let's go ahead and start with audiobooks. The first audiobook recommendation I have for you is a book that I actually haven't finished yet. I'm about a third of the way in, and that is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. In the original audiobook, I believe it is narrated by Neil Gaiman and I actually was looking at the audiobook because of this. I thought it would be really fun to listen to Neil Gaiman narrate his own stories because he's an amazing storyteller. But I saw actually that HarperCollins had redone the Graveyard Book audio book with a full cast. And I watched the trailer for it. I'll leave the trailer link down below. And I saw that they had hired all of these amazing voice actors and that it included sound effects and music. And I was so excited. So I went ahead and I bought it and I love it so incredibly much. I am listening to it while reading it and it's making everything way more spooky and way more cozy and it's just incredible. It's so incredible. So if you're looking for like a spooky middle grade audiobook, I would highly, highly recommend this. For those of you who are unaware, The Graveyard Book is written by Neil Gaiman and it's about a boy named Nobody Owens who grows up essentially raised by ghosts in a graveyard. It's really great. The next audiobook that I have to recommend is Sadie, and this is by Courtney Summers. This is a thriller mystery. It's a little bit gruesome, and I love this one because it is recorded kind of in the form of a podcast. This was huge last year. I actually read this last Halloween, and it made a huge lasting impression on me. I thought it was so well done, so gripping, and the audiobook was just so phenomenal. Again, I think I already said this, but it's a full cast, and and the acting in it was so perfect. This one is about a girl whose baby sister Maddie is killed and she decides to go and find her killer and seek revenge. Sadie's story is actually parallel to the story of a radio host who is trying to track down Sadie because she has now gone missing just like Maddie. And so it's really fascinating because you're kind of listening and reading these two parallel stories and how they're interwoven and it's kind of creepy, definitely has you at the edge of your seat and the audiobook is so wonderful. There are a ton of trigger warnings for this book, however, including like sexual assault, obviously murder, childhood trauma, things like that. So if you are reading this, I would just be careful and it is YA. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to graphic novels. Just a little bit of a disclaimer, I'm actually doing some book reorganization, so I couldn't find every single book that I wanna talk about, but if I don't have the book in front of me, I'll just go ahead and insert a picture of it. So the first graphic novel I wanna talk about is an old series, and it is the Amulet series by Kazu Kabushi. This is such a perfect series for this time of year. It's really spooky and atmospheric. It's about a family who goes to live in a family manor or old house. It's very, very creepy. There's like things that go bump in the night. There is a sister, a brother, and then the mother. And the mother is actually dragged off into another world. And the children have to go in and try to save her. A monster has come to take their mom. So right off the bat, we've already got like monsters and other worlds. And it's just so wonderful. It's, it's perfect if you want something atmospheric and creepy. Here's a great picture. Look at how creepy this is. 
There's just tons of really awesome, beautiful, atmospheric, scary things in here. And it's just, I don't know, I, I can't help but feel like the bumps in the night with all of the characters. And there are so many gorgeous depictions of fall as well. I love it. Here's a picture. So it will definitely give you those fall, creepy, slightly scary vibes. The next book that I have to recommend is Pumpkin Heads, and this is by Rainbow Rowell, and it is illustrated by Faith Erin Hicks. So I actually bought this on release date. I accidentally saw it. I was strolling around Barnes & Noble. You know, everything kind of comes out on like a Tuesday. And I saw this and I just got so excited flipping through it. This is about two friends named DJ and Josiah who every single autumn work in a pumpkin patch together. And this is the very last fall that they are going to be working together. And they're determined to have the best last work experience there ever. And it's just really, really cute. It's really, really sweet. It's an awesome story of friendship. It was really, really funny. And it just put me in so many awesome fall vibe moods because everything takes place at a pumpkin patch. So I don't know, there was just everything about it made me super happy. Plus they were both wearing overalls and I was just like, oh, Look at the end papers too. It's a map of the pumpkin patch. So this one's really, really sweet. And if you're not interested in any creepy vibes at all, you just want the fall vibes, I would totally recommend this book. The next graphic novel that I have, I don't actually have the physical copy. I mean, I do, but I can't find it. And that is Through the Woods. And this is written and illustrated by Emily Carroll. And it is so good. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So this is a compilation of short, scary stories. This is the first year that I've actually read all of the scary stories in this. Um, I think previously I had just read a couple, I had like skipped around, but I read all of them and they are all so good. There are so many beautiful, beautiful stories that are creepy and scary. It's definitely a graphic novel if you're interested in like horror art, but I don't think that it's too, too scary. It is YA, but it did scare me a lot. <laughs> And because they're short stories, I can't really give you like a general summary. It's just that every single short story was scary and they're like mini horror graphic novel short stories. I highly recommend it. It was really, really, really great. And the art style was just, oh, so beautiful. Okay, next, let's go on to middle grade. So the first middle grade I wanna talk to you about, I also don't know where my copy is because of the bookshelf organization. <laughs> It's fine. And that is Nevermore, and this is by Jessica Townsend. I love Nevermore. I'm sure you've heard of it. A lot of people on booktube are constantly talking about it, myself being one of them, just because it's such an amazing book, and it's such an amazing book series, but it's just perfect to read really any time of the year, but I highly recommend it specifically for autumn. So this is a book about a girl named Morgan Crow, and Morgan is cursed to die on her 11th birthday. But right before she dies, she is swooped up by a man named Jupiter North who takes her off and enters her in these trials to try to get into this thing called the Wondrous Society. There are lots and lots of magical elements. There's like a competition that happens. There are all of these creepy things and scary things. It's got lots of Harry Potter vibes. It's whimsical, it's charming, a little bit scary, but mostly just a really, really wonderful and well-written adventure. <laughs> I highly highly recommend the series in general but especially the first book the next middle grade I have is one that I've just finished and that is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab and oh my gosh do I love this book if you like ghost stories at all or if you're not sure of a ghost story and you want to have a good recommendation for where to start start with this one this one is so good oh my god I loved it so much so this is about a girl and her name is Cass and after a near-death experience Cass is able to see ghosts and Cass best friend is actually named Jacob and he is a ghost so the premise is basically that her parents ironically are interested in doing like a series documentary style for looking for ghosts they don't know that Cass can actually see ghosts and they all move to Edinburgh to film this kind of like a reality television series. And while Cass is there, she kind of goes on an adventure and finds a bunch of ghosts. And it's just really 
cool. And then the last middle grade I have to recommend is The Language of Spells, and this is by Garrett Weir, and I love this book so much. This is so cute. Now, I will say that this is not like a flawless book. I do think that it was a little bit slow in the beginning, so like as a reader, if you don't necessarily love slower paced things, you might not like this as much. However, I actually like slow buildups and things like that, so I happen to adore this book. It's so charming and so cozy and so beautiful. It's got illustrations before every single one of the chapters, and it's just so sweet. So this particular book is about a dragon named Grisha and his best friend named Maggie, and they have to discover what happened to all of the other dragons who disappeared from Vienna. And it's definitely got lots of cozy, magical vibes, so if that is what you are into for autumn, I think you'll like this book. Okay, that's it for middle grade, so let's move on to YA. So the first book recommendation is actually an author recommendation versus just a book recommendation, and that is anything specifically by Libba Bray. She has very fall time vibe books, and specifically I would say either A Great and Terrible Beauty or the Diviner series would be perfect for fall. So the Diviner series is set in the 1920s in New York and it centers around a girl named Evie who can touch an object and see the object's past memories, essentially, like the person who is associated with the object. And she uses this to help her uncle solve a murder mystery case. It's creepy, it's got lots of paranormal vibes, and I love that it's set in the 1920s. It's so well done, and it's extremely scary. Like this, this book is ter absolutely terrifying. Like it's very scary. Oof. And then the other series that I would recommend from her is A Great and Terrible Beauty. And this one is very atmospheric. It's about a girl named Gemma Doyle who goes to a boarding school and discovers some secrets and maybe some magic at this boarding school. But it's very creepy, very well done. I love this series very much. So I don't think that you can go wrong with either one of those series from Libba Bray. So the next book is a book that I read last October and it was probably my favorite book that I read last October and that is The Wicked Deep and this is by Shay Earnshaw and I absolutely loved this book so much. So it's got a couple typical YA tropes, however I just thought that the writing was so flawless, so perfect and I highly recommend this to everyone because my enjoyment level while reading it was so high up. So this is about a little town that is cursed. Every single summer, three witches that were wrongfully drowned centuries ago come back, take the form of girls, and then drown boys. It centers kind of around a girl named Penny and her experience trying to figure out what's happening and possibly trying to protect a boy that she meets and develops feelings for. It's really, really interesting, totally spooky, really creepy, unexpected, perfect. It's perfect. I love the writing in this one specifically too, so if you enjoy really nice descriptive but not overly flowery writing, I think you're really gonna vibe with this book. And then the last YA recommendation is a book that I'm only halfway through right now, but I am loving it so much, and that is House of Salt and Sorrows, and this is by Erin A. Craig, and I am loving this book so much. This is perfect, I think, for fall time because it has so many creepy vibes. It's actually a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses. So this is about a girl named Annalie who lives by the sea in a place called Highmore, and she lives there with her sisters. And her older sisters have all been dying and she is convinced that something is going on and that her last sister who passed away was actually murdered. It's a little bit of a murder mystery, lots and lots of fantastical elements, beautiful writing, and so creepy. It's so perfect and cozy and just enough spooky for the fall time. Even though I haven't finished it, I really wanted to recommend it just because I think it's really, really well done so far. So. Okay, and then finally we have three adult recommendations. So the first one is a series recommendation and it is the Every Heart of Doorway series. The only book that I could find from this series is In an Absent Dream, but specifically from this series, I would actually recommend reading Down Among the Sticks and Bones, 
or Every Heart of Doorway because Every Heart of Doorway is like almost a little bit of a murder mystery and Down Among the Sticks and Bones has zombies and vampires. So they're both kind of perfect for the spooky time time. So I'm not gonna talk about this one. I'll talk more about what the first one is about. Every Heart of Doorway is about this school and it's basically for children who have gone to another world and then come back and they're trying to recuperate and readjust to the normal reality. So for example, it would be like if Alice went down to Wonderland and then she came back, but she wanted to go to Wonderland and nobody believed her that Wonderland was real, she would be sent to the school and the school would help her kind of cope with her new reality until Wonderland let her back in, or maybe it never would. I don't know your life, Alice. I feel like Down Among the Sticks and Bones is also like equally perfect as Every Heart of Doorway for the spooky time months, but either one, they're both really, really awesome. Every Heart of Doorway is creepy and scary. There's a little bit of a murder mystery in it as well, and I personally think that you can't go wrong with any of the books in this series. They are technically novellas, they're really, really short, and I don't really know anybody who doesn't like the series. I think the series is pretty well loved by a lot of people here on booktube, so. Yes. <laughs> the next book I have is more of like a fall recommendation versus specifically like a spooky time recommendation, and that is Marisha Pestle's Special Topics in Calamity Physics. And this is a little bit of a mystery. This is about a girl named Blue, and Blue is kind of considered like a very intelligent, smart girl. And she travels everywhere with her father, who is a professor. While Blue is at school, she meets a teacher who she absolutely adores, and then tragedy strikes and the teacher passes away. But Blue is convinced that it's not just an accidental death and that there's more to the story. So the entire book is kind of working backwards. She's trying to figure out what happened. I will say that this book is also not perfect in my eyes. I feel like a lot of the plot moves really, really slow. And I think that Blue can be kind of like a hard character to like at times as well as some of her friends. I, I didn't like any of her friends. However, the plot twist had me shook. Like it was so good. I love the plot twist so much. I thought it was so well done. And it, I, I did not see it coming, but as soon as I saw it, I immediately recognized every single one of the clues. And I just think that Marisha Pestle is brilliant. It's also really perfect because not only does it have the elements of trying to figure out if it's a murder mystery, but also schools involved. And for some reason, whenever I read a book about academia, it always reminds me of the fall. So this just had tons of really awesome cozy vibes. And then finally, my very last recommendation is a book that I also read last year, and it is An Unkindness of Magicians, and this is by Kat Howard. I loved this book so much. I know it's not for everyone. I think a bunch of my friends actually didn't like it very much, but this is one of my favorite books that I read from last year. I thought it was just so good. So this is about a group of magicians, and they're called magicians, but really they're like witches and wizards, and they live in upper New York City. They're all very, very wealthy, and they all come from different houses, like family houses. Something called the turning happens. When the turning happens, that means that all of the houses kind of duel each other for power. The goal is to be the house with like the strongest, the house that wins all of the duels, the house that has the most power, and they kind of control the rules for their mini society until the next turning. They all kind of have a champion and they all get ready to duel, but at the last minute, a newcomer comes in named Sydney and she takes them all by surprise and it's kind of about finding out who Sydney is and what happens. It's very dark. There are lots of dark elements to this story, that's for sure, but I loved it so much. And if you like things like competition, magic, forbidden love, things like that. I think you're gonna like this. I loved it. I feel like urban fantasy is definitely not for everyone. It's like very specific taste, but I personally loved it. So maybe you will too. Okay guys, I think that's everything for my book recommendations. Do you have any cozy book recommendations? If you do, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm always down to check out a new cozy book recommendation, especially if it has some spooky elements to it. I love you so much. And until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.